it's definitely coming down outside and I'm glad for it. We had a rough year here in California in 2020. Our fire season was out of control and we had those burning fires that ravaged the state for months on end, creating those apocalyptic orange skies that I'm sure you guys saw on social media. But it's days like this where it's cold, rainy and wet outside that I like to come in and curl up with a nice book and a nice drink and warm myself up. And today with a little help from the author, we have a drink pairing here that's gonna bring rage and fire and a little bit of whiskey to the table. I think that combination will do the trick and warm us up nicely. Let's drink about it. Hey everyone, the book and the drink here, and today we're talking the Burning series by Evan Winter, The Rage of Dragons, and The Fires of Vengeance. Books one and two of a four-part series that Evan is currently writing, releasing the first book in 2019 to critical acclaim, and the second one just a few weeks ago here in 2020. So he seems to be on the ball, and it's always nice to see fantasy authors who are making their way through a series at a good pace. Evan Winter has created a fast-paced, action-packed world here that is also unique in setting, and it makes it very, very interesting to read and different from other fantasy novels. And you're gonna have a hard time putting these books down. I made my way through the thousand pages combined really, really fast. Now, don't get me wrong, it's fantasy through and through with sword fighting and dragons and magic and the whole nine, but the setting is different, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, what am I drinking, you ask? Well, it's whiskey for sure, but a specific type of whiskey. And I reached out to Evan Winter on the social medias and told him that I was going to be reading his series and if he had a nice drink pairing in mind. He said that he likes to sip on a specific type of whiskey when he writes and well, who am I to argue with the author? So this is our pairing for today. And it's not just any old whiskey. He likes to sip on Woodford Reserve, he said specifically, though he didn't mention which one but I grabbed two versions here that we can talk about and we can compare and contrast the two and this will give us a chance to talk about different ways to enjoy whiskey a little bit later on. But before that, a word from the author. This is printed on the dust covers of both of these books. Evan has always loved fantasy novels, but when his son was born, he realized that there weren't many epic fantasy novels featuring characters who look like him. So, before he ran out of time, he started writing them. Well, that just gets you right in the feels, especially if you're a parent. But unfortunately, what he's saying is true. There just isn't enough diversity in fantasy writing and many other genres as well. Though this has been changing in recent years with N.K. Jemisin and S.A. Chakraborty who brought a Middle Eastern flavor to fantasy and Rebecca Kwong and her Poppy War series which we'll talk about on the channel so subscribe if you want to see that. And don't be fooled by this face here. She looks sweet and innocent but she does not hold back punches. But why is diversity even a good thing to have in the genre? Well, the more diverse the pool of authorship there is, the more diverse the books are going to be. Every author, whether by intent or unintentionally, will bring their background and their experiences into the writing and onto the page. And that provides for more unique stories that are different and interesting and fun to read. And you won't get bored of them and they'll be memorable. Evan Winter spent his formative years in Zambia and the setting in these books very much reflects his experiences that he had growing up in that region. The influences are very clear as this whole fiefdom, village, tribal setting that he's developed here is really, really described well. And another author who did not grow up in that region, I don't think would choose this setting for fantasy, or if they did, I'm sure they would not be able to describe it as intricately as Evan Winter has here. That is the power of diversity in books, and I'm glad we're going in that direction. Now, let's talk about the setting and culture in these books because it's very, very interesting. There's a caste system that everything in society kind of revolves around. And you're born into a caste, whether it's higher up in the hierarchy or lower, and you kind of stay there in that path for all your life. You can kind of raise your standing within that given caste, but you could never leap into another caste. 
And if you're born into a lesser caste, well, you're treated as a lesser and those above you will look down upon you and talk down to you and really make you feel like you're less than them. And the rules and laws of the society are different for people in different castes, which inevitably leads to oppression and injustice. This series answers the question, what happens when that oppression and injustice from above just becomes too much to bear? When everything that you live for, everyone that you love is taken away from you, would you suddenly snap? Well, without going into spoilers, this is the predicament that our main character, Tao, is facing. He is stripped of everything that he cares about and something within him flips. And he gains this singular focus, this goal to right the injustices that have befallen him and to take vengeance on those who did it. And Tao, with his newfound obsession and singular goal and rage running through his veins, makes his way down that path to gain the vengeance that he thinks he deserves. And how does he go about getting his vengeance? By becoming the best possible fighter he can be. Combat in all its forms drives the narrative in these books. It's not just combat for the sake of combat or putting action on a page, though it certainly does do that, but combat becomes the vessel by which the plot is delivered to us. The character development is brought to us and even much of the world building comes to us by the way of combat. Combat in all of its forms is prevalent here. Duels, practice, skirmishes, war, it's all there and it's fast paced and action packed. Now, I know in an earlier video I said that R.A. Salvatore does the best combat scenes, but I think he may have found a rival here in Evan Winter. The combat happens throughout these books and it's never dull, never boring, and I'm always looking forward to the next fight. Mmm, that's good. Now, it's not just melee combat that we're talking about here. There's a magic system that is very intricate and very unique. And I have to give it up to Evan Winter here for both coming up with this magic system, which is very elaborate, but also to his writing prowess for being able to convey the ideas that he has on the page and have it make sense to the reader. He just does a phenomenal job of explaining this complex magic system that ties into the history of the world, into the underworld, into the gods, and it's just multifaceted and deep, and it's brilliant, and I haven't read another magic system that's even remotely similar to this. There's been two authors that I read this year that I was really, really impressed with. The first one was Haruki Murakami, which was the impetus for me to start the channel because his writing is just phenomenal. And if you're not reading Murakami yet, go out and get a Murakami book and check out my video linked right here. And the second one has impressed me, especially because this is his first and second offerings, is Evan Winter. Such good writing, such a lively world that draws you in and is full of action and just keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. Kudos, Evan Winter, you did such a good job and I can't wait for book three. And I can't wait to head over to the bar and show you guys this whiskey and talk about whiskey drinking. Let's go. So Woodford Reserve, the preferred whiskey of Evan Winter. Let's talk about these a little bit because they're a little bit different. I've been sipping on the rye whiskey during the book portion of the shoot and it's quite delicious. There's a lot of interesting characteristics going on here. And if you guys remember, we used rye whiskey in the Dark Elf Trilogy video where we made the Black Manhattan and I talked about how wheaty it is. And this also has a wheat quality to it, though less so than the other one that we were having, which was Knob Creek. But I think that makes it more sippable. I was reading an interview online at some point and Evan Winter was actually a bartender at some point. In that interview that I was reading, I think he mentioned bourbon specifically. So let's give this a shot as well. Mm, this is also delicious. A little bit more caramelly, or a little bit more sweet. Not sweet in the sense of having like a sugary drink, just not as dry as this one. And yeah, after tasting the bourbon and then going to the rye, you can really get that wheat kind of flavor, that rye flavor, I guess, coming through. Both of them are delicious. This, by the way, is whiskey neat, which just means whiskey from the bottle into your glass, and you just enjoy it like this. 
some people like to have their whiskey on ice or whiskey on the rocks. Whiskey on the rocks is also a great way to enjoy whiskey, though it does tend to dilute your drink a little bit as the ice melts over time. To keep the ice from melting really quickly, you can get one of these fancy ice balls, which is not fancy at all. It's just ice in the shape of a ball, but has decreased surface area, so it melts a little bit slower. Also really good. It does cool down your whiskey a little bit, and I think it helps to open it up just a bit as well. Those flavors come through a little bit more, and it's not as tight. And if you have a very sharp whiskey, one that has a bite to it, then you can use ice to kind of alleviate that a little bit. Now, a compromise between having whiskey neat and having ice in it is just to put a few drops of water in it. Not a lot, like two or three drops, and that'll also help to open it up, help kind of bloom the whiskey a little bit, but doesn't continue to dilute it as ice does as it continues to melt. These are actually both very smooth, easy to drink whiskeys to sip on, on ice or water or just straight up. Sometimes a whiskey will just have a little bit of bite to it, especially if it's like a single malt scotch. If you're starting off, I would maybe steer clear of those and kind of ease your way into it. These would be great. Another starting point is a blended whiskey, which is how I actually got into whiskey drinking. Something like Jameson would be a great starter whiskey. And I still drink this. It's just very smooth and satisfying and not really hard on the budget either. As the winter months are upon us, get yourself some whiskey and warm yourself up on those cold days. And check out those books by Evan Winter. They're really, really good. I think you're going to like them a lot. I'll link them down below. And thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.